Previously on Road to Loretta's. All the fast riders are there. Everybody's over there. Like if you say you want Loretta's, it's something really important. So I just want to be one of those guys that can say that. I think at Loretta's, it's going to be grueling. It's going to be hard, but it's really what I want to do. I want to go out there and show what I've got, give it everything. It's pretty difficult to get there, obviously, because I didn't even make it last year. We just need to get out of here uh, with no worries. Everybody who's done anything in Supercross, myself, Rich Carmichael, Jerry McGrath, all these guys came up through Loretta's. It's the biggest, the best, most pristine amateur national in the world. If you want to get on the radar of amateur motocross, this is the place to be. This is the proving ground, because if you win here, you beat everyone. And I think that's what makes this the crucible of amateur motocross. It does not get any more competitive than Loretta Lynn. In pursuit of Loretta Lens, Steel City represents a major qualifying landmark. In the Northeast, it's the regional gateway to the ranch, and since 1984, it's also been a staple to the Pro National Motocross Series. With slick track conditions, it's a dangerous combination that sent Dakota down hard in practice. The mud's definitely going to be a, be a factor. It's obviously a lot easier to crash in the mud, and the mud's a big equalizer, so start's going to be key for tomorrow. Back in 2007, Ryan Dungey was called from the B-Class straight to the pro ranks. At this level, the amateur pro line begins to blur. Up against Mother Nature and the best riders in the region, Dakota Alex is faced with stiff competition at the second and final round of Loretta Lynn qualifiers. This weekend, my main competition is definitely Cooper Webb. We had some, uh, good, some good battles in the Spring Nationals. But really at the regional, there's no slouches. Everyone's here to qualify and the short races. Know thyself, know thy enemy. A thousand battles. You're good. A thousand Start victories. Sun Tzu, Art of War. First moto, I pulled the whole shot. I was really pumped with that. I got like 20 second gate pick, so I got a little lucky there. And uh, I was leading in the first lap. Cooper passed me on the downhill. The three moto format of the regional requires consistency. The average of those scores will send the top seven riders to Loretta Lens. It went pretty much as planned, I guess. I told him to get the best hole shot he could and uh, ride a safe race to the finish and, and uh, came in second, which is fine. Strategy is the glue that binds good finishes with consistency. I think I got a second place hole shot and then passed the guy with a few turns and uh, got the win, so I was good. And, just riding my comfort zone this weekend and trying to get top seven. With nearly 800 riders in attendance for the Southeast Regional and a qualifying spot at stake, riders prep for a solid weekend of racing at the Deep South's premier racetrack. We're in the Southeast Regional Alabama Mill Creek and I'm just trying to qualify so I can get to the riders in the 250B mod and the 450B mod. Oh, I definitely feel really good. I got the fastest time out there and my bags are working awesome. So. Nothing better. Couldn't be any better. With the fastest lap of time practice, Anthony positioned himself as the man to beat in the B class. I haven't stopped training. I've been training really hard, and I'm, I'm just 100% sure I can go out there and kill it. So that's what I'm hoping for. A Moto One hole shot put Anthony out front early. But even with the clear track ahead, a simple mistake sent him fighting back through the pack. I came out there. I thought the track was going to be just like in practice was. Well, I went in the turn. And it was really slippery, and I jumped into it. And as soon as I land, my front end just washed out. And then I just got up and started to go to the fastest IQ, and I realized I was going faster than the other guys, so that helped me out and coming close to them. And I feel just really happy even that I didn't win. Although he didn't win, his charge to the front earned him a comfortable second place finish in the moto, a solid start to the first day of racing. Well, in the deep to be now, I'm going to go out there. Just like I said, go try to qualify. But if I can go fast, I'll go fast. And just try to win like I always want to. Anthony's expectation for himself is nothing less than a win. In the 250B class, he found himself coming through the pack and once again falling short of a win. Horrible moto. I got a really bad gate pick. I got 26, but well, anyways, I shouldn't be able to work through and get a better position, but I guess I'm not feeling that good today. I wasn't riding that good. Balanced motocross, Bowling Green, Kentucky. Hot and humid with perfect dirt. It's the closest parallel to the challenges of Loretta Lens. We're at Balance MX for the Mideast Youth Regional. Trying to qualify this weekend, get through to Loretta's, hopefully get a gate this weekend. 
Oh, strategy, you know, just like typical motocross strategy, you know, it's uh, be one of the fastest kids. You know, I told Zach, I said, let's focus on single digit finishes. Focused on staying inside the top 10, Zach went out and rode the ninth fastest qualifying lap. You know, if he can ride with the intensity that he needs to ride with, that he's capable of riding with, with good starts, keeps the bike on two wheels, he's got a shot. Practice today went pretty good. I think I placed myself where I need to be today to really go in with confidence tomorrow for the race. The ebb and flow of confidence is one of the deciding factors of winning and losing. Being confident in your motorcycle is just as important as your skills. Well, what happened was we had a, a, a mod bike that had approximately five hours and for some reason it locked on a jump. And uh, so what we got to do is take a stock bike and um, and get it together. Racing a stock bike in a modified class puts Alex at a disadvantage. With less horsepower, he'll have to work even harder to stay up front. I feel very confident that we can still get in. You know, a seven is just as good as a one. We want to win, uh, and I feel that he can still win. So uh, uh, the main thing is that we get a chance to race, and that's, that's the most important thing. Back in Pennsylvania, Dakota's competitor and former teammate Cooper Webb posted the top finishes of the day of racing. There's nothing to prove by going for Cooper right now. It means nothing. It will mean something in a couple months. But those who win are also the most comfortable in the lead. I mean, the goal is going to be to win, but realistically, there are 11 other people that I can think of that have that same goal, and any of them could happen. After a year filled with injury and setback, moving forward is a careful balancing act between coming back strong and staying healthy. Yeah, last year was pretty much a disaster. I've been thinking about that pretty much all this weekend and all leading up to the regional, so I've kind of taken it easy. Once again, Dakota and Cooper Webb found themselves deadlocked in a battle for the lead in the 250B stock. While Dakota's plan is centered around safety until Loretta's, his competitor has been chalking up wins around the country. I definitely left a little bit on the table. Well, definitely speed-wise, but more like aggression-wise. So I really just take my time to see like the when I was passing people, and definitely just rode away in my comfort zone. He hopes that holding back now will give him the surprise advantage at Loretta's. Came here and rode clean, smooth, smart, and uh, qualified. And now I'm heading back down to Georgia, east of the heat, start training, and yeah, it's gonna be game time once uh, Loretta's comes around. At the highest level, racing to the edge and beyond it is a matter of psychology. A racer must balance aggression, safety, and risk at the speed of a supercomputer. After the race, understanding your results is a key to knowing what to do next. With a mediocre start, Anthony's ability to pass was the best test again. Finishing in second, he dissected his performance in hopes of winning and potentially securing the overall in the next moto. Well, you know, it was, it was really disappointing for me not being able to win. But afterwards, I realized, yeah, I was riding really good. I was on the edge, I was going pretty fast, I just didn't get the start. To Anthony, anything other than a win is a loss. It's really expensive to rain, really hard. Hopefully tomorrow isn't gonna be that bad. I really wanna race in good conditions, but if it is muddy, I'll just go up there and try to do my best. I actually hate the mud, but somehow I'm good at it, even though I hate it. So it'd be good for me at the same time, but I won't like it. With the rain came opportunity. Washing away his previous losses, Anthony refocused his energy to the start. After setting the fastest laps in his class, he knew that with a start could come a win. His hunch paid off. A start worthy of Ricky Carmichael himself gave Anthony the edge he needed. His skills in the mud led him to win the rest of the motos on the day. It feels amazing to end up the week like this, and I ended up really good winning both of the last motos. So I'm happy. I'm going to go back to MPF, train harder. And I know the competition's not as easy as I thought, but hey, I'm going to train double hard. Coming soon on Road to Loretta's. As the regionals round off, our five racers that have yet to qualify learned that making it to Loretta's is just as hard as they imagined. Victory and defeat. We see which racers have what it takes to make it to the most prestigious amateur motocross national on earth. Going into tomorrow is going to be a different deal with this, both divisions combined, so that's going to be a harder race, and hopefully I can hold up my end of the deal on it and finish strong.